Hey guys, welcome back to episode four of the Into the Deep podcast with Father Theodore and me, David Gerges. Today we sit down to discuss fasting. We go over the book, The Spirituality of Fasting by Pope Shenouda III, and we discuss some important topics such as why we fast so much, how I can benefit spiritually from fasting, and why we should look forward to fasting. I guarantee everyone who listens to this episode will learn something new, and we hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. All right. So today we're going to be discussing fasting. And uh, to, to prep for this, you had me read The Spirituality of Fasting by Pope Shenouda. And uh, that's kind of what we're going to be discussing today, going through the book and just highlighting some different things that were written and going into more depth. Let's start by by just an overview of fasting and, and some of the the rules of what what you think people think fasting is. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I actually was excited to talk about this because I feel like um, for anybody who knows anything about Coptic Christianity, that's one of the first things that they think about when they think about like the Coptic Orthodox Church. They, 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 you, you say the Coptic Orthodox Church, then you, you, the first thing they go to is fasting and how much we fast because probably uh, we fast more than uh, almost every other Christian denomination. And so I think probably if we do it that often, we ought to know why we do it and the benefits of doing it and you know and and the reasons and how to do it correctly versus how to do it incorrectly so i mm-hmm. feel like that would be beneficial and actually i i had to read that book because I, I read it myself when i was um when i was younger and it really affected me and changed how i how i looked at fasting so for those who are less inclined to read hopefully the, they can listen to the podcast and maybe pick up a couple of notes from uh from pope Shunita's book well i think definitely if uh if someone is thinking about reading it, I would recommend it. Cause I, this is actually the first spiritual book I've ever read ever, 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 ever. So um, (laughs) I should assign you more homework. Yeah, probably, (laughs) probably. Um, But also it's a good one for me because I, I personally uh, haven't fasted in a very long time, the correct or actually anyway, but in general, uh, I probably haven't fasted in years the um when i think that most people when they don't there are people who are just sort of like against on principle for for whatever reason but i think most of the time people are not fasting maybe because they don't understand it you know maybe people tell them one or two very soft or weak reasons and then you know they're like well i'm not convinced so 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 i'm not going to do it yeah i mean i'll tell you what what i thought originally was you fast because you know the church fasts and there's periods of fasting and the reason that it's okay to do, or the reason that they justify it is it teaches self-control. Sure. And like, that's an okay reason, I guess. It's, but That's part of the reason, you know, the fasting is for discipline or it does teach us discipline. But there are many, many other reasons that I hope we can, we can go over. Like the, the thing is, first of all, it, it's even actually, I don't think fully correct to say, you know, the church uh, set down or created fasting because actually fasting, we see it. We see it in the Old Testament. We see it in the New Testament. We see it all over we have seen in the history of the church so i mean this is something that was existing uh even actually you know the first command is technically a fast right you know uh, adam and eve they were supposed to eat of every single tree except for one tree right the tree of knowledge of good and evil and so they had to fast right there was a certain thing that they could not eat and everybody else or everything else that they could they could eat so i mean fasting is not something that you know, the church woke up one day and decided, hey, you know, this would be a nice spiritual fa- uh, spiritual practice. It's something that we see uh, literally from the beginning. Question about that is, what purpose did Adam and Eve in paradise have to learn self-control or, or like why was fasting for them important? Well, I mean, it, it would be the same answer to why did they have, why would God give them a tree that they weren't supposed to eat from, right? How could God... How could they display obedience without having opportunity for disobedience? Okay. So, I mean, the the, the, the reason that, like, or how, how are they showing they love God except by having the opportunity to go against Him and choosing not to, right? So, so fasting, in, in, in a sense, is my opportunity to show God, I, I, I prefer you or I choose you over, over my bodily needs or my worldly comfort or my materialistic needs. Okay. What is the church's rules on fasting? How, how, how are we taught to fast? Oh, just basically like, how do we do it? Just yeah. the nuts and bolts of whatever. Mm-hmm. So we have 
four major fasting periods and one kind of really small fasting period. And then we have uh, a fast Wednesday and Friday. So I'll go into each of them. Uh, the, the most famous uh, fast that we have is for the, the great fast, or sometimes people call it Lent, which is uh, a total in the Coptic Church of 55 days. There is a week of preparation, and then there is Holy Week, and then there are 40 days in between. So it's about 55 days. The Advent fast, which is the fast right before uh, the Feast of the Nativity or Christmas, this is 43 days. Um, and then the Fast of the Apostles. The Fast of the Apostles uh, is changes in length every year because it, it starts the day after Pentecost. So Pentecost can come you know, whenever it comes. It just comes 50 days after Easter. And then it'll go all the way until July 12th. And then uh, St. Mary's Fast, which is a two-week period uh, in August, from August 7th to August uh, 22nd. And those are the four like longest or major fasts. We also have uh, a three-day fast, short fast, uh, the fast of Nineveh or Jonah's fast, which is done always two weeks before uh, Lent begins. And then, of course, like I mentioned, they have we have fasts on Wednesdays and Fridays. Only difference between any of those fasts is some of those fasts we uh, are permitted to eat fish, and some of the fasts we're not permitted to eat fish. So, like Wednesdays and Fridays, Jonah's fast, Lent. We're not supposed to have fish those those uh, fasts. Um, the, the fast of the Nativity, Advent fast, fast of the Apostles, the fast of Saint Mary. Um, those ones, fish is permitted. Why? Why the difference between fish or no fish and different I, fasts? You know, I, you know. Actually, it, it's it's fish is permitted in some as as sort of like accommodation for people, so that it's easier for them to fast. And those other fasts are really considered maybe like stricter fasts. Um, and so that's where I fish isn't permitted. But I, if you actually want to be even really more technical, there are times even in like, for example, in the feast, of, in the fast, the Advent fast, the day right before the feast is a, is a strict fasting day where there's no fish permitted. So essentially it's when I'm, when I'm fasting very strictly, then I, I, I have more like, per, like less permissions of, of, of what to eat. And so strict versus non-strict fast is the only rule that changes about the the food or is there other things that we should be doing in stricter fast that we don't do in no non-strict? actually there's something that i actually have been so excited to talk about because i want to make sure people know mm. is that abstaining from food is an essential part of fasting so actually like if you think about when you go to the doctor and they tell you oh we're going to run labs tomorrow make sure you're fasting mm-hmm. what does that mean to you well, you can't eat or drink before you can't eat or drink right mm-hmm. you're gonna have, to have nothing so actually when we're fasting what we ought to do is not eat for a certain period of time and then break that fast with fasting with like vegetarian or vegan food. So I should, I should spend some time not eating, spend some time in hunger. And I hope we can talk about like, what does it mean to be hungry? Is it okay to be hungry? Is it mm-hmm. bad? Is it something good? Like I, I want to talk about that for a little bit so that we understand. I think we are, we are, we're sometimes lulled into this complacency of like, it's wrong for us to deprive ourselves. It's wrong for us to feel uncomfortable. Why would we make ourselves not feel good? So I want to make sure that we, we touch on that. But anyway, going back to abstaining, that does change from fast to fast. Sometimes the stricter fasts, I would, I would abstain for a longer period of time. I might wait till 3 p.m. or 5 p.m. or sunset to, to eat. Whereas in some of the less strict fasts, I may break my fast at, you know, at 10 or at noon, depending on Actually, and this is also another thing that I hope we like make sure we is clear. The guy, there are guidelines in the church, general guidelines. Like we said, fish is permitted in certain fasts and not in others, and that we should ought to abstain and things like that. But the better answer for when you talk about specifics about what to do and when to do it, I should speak to my spiritual father, because there's a lot of things I might fa- I might think to myself, you know what. This fast, I'm going to go all out and I'm going to fast until 7 p.m., mm-hmm. okay? And I do it every day. And because I do it, I start to have pride or vainglory that I'm doing something nobody else is doing. Or maybe I'm going to add extra days to my fast. I'm going to fast a week early or I'm going to fast a week after, you know? And then I become like sort of vainglorious in my fast. Or even I could be fasting that is 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 not healthy for me. Like I, I could be doing something dangerous for myself mm-hmm. because I'm doing it without my spiritual father's guidance. And so like, it's important for me when I, when, when I look at the guidelines of the church, that's my baseline. I ought to do what the church has, has put out for me. But then actually for either to make it less strict or more strict, depending on my personal needs, I, I go to my spiritual father and, and get that advice and that guidance. So the, the, one of the big things that's talked about in the book that 
I guess it's kind of a given, but maybe some people like me wouldn't know, is that fasting is like a very um, useful tool in terms of spirituality. Like the, the, the eating and the being hungry and abstaining from food is kind of just one one part of it. Yeah. And the rest of it is really just all about spirituality and, and uh, you know, the spiritual reasons on why we fast. Um, and so you're saying that that is an important part to link up with your, like make sure those are in line with your spiritual father's guidance. Yeah. And actually, you know, the thing that I think happens a lot of times is people who maybe are used to fasting regularly, like they do it regularly and they say, you know, I fasted every Lent and I never benefited anything or I, you know, I always fast every Wednesday and Friday and nothing ever changes or everything, nothing's this, everything's the same. If I only fast, like changing my diet and changing my food, I mean, lots of people do that. There are people who are non-Christians that are, for whatever reasons, you know, they, they're vegans all the time or vegetarians all the time and there's no spiritual benefit to them. So actually, I think the food part is the easiest and most simplest part of it. You know, <laughs> the, people the, disagree with the, it. The, there, there is something that is, there, there, are, there are things that are much more difficult than, than sort of changing my diet. Changing my diet is, is sort of like step one. Okay. So I want to spend a little more time on the, the diet and the, and the food side of it before we kind of, because I think people are always more interested in that part. That And I think the spiritual <laughs> thing is going to be a, a much bigger uh, sure. topic. So I don't want to intermingle, like, you know, crisscross back and forth. So, on the topic of of the food part, um, how, how did, from what I see in in terms of fasting, is that people are very very um, nitpicky. They're they're always trying to find a way to get what they want, uh, and mm. and they don't really care about you know anything else. Like uh, I'll have fasting cheese, or I'll have you know soy milk, or whatever. Like yes, yeah, some people ask me like, oh, how, how how many ingredients do I have to read down the list until mm-hmm. something is fasting or not fasting? Yeah. So uh, what 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 is the what do you have to say about that idea? I, I would say like actually for the most part, when people are asking those questions, that you're you're kind of missing the mark of what fasting is about. Anyway, let let me actually set it, set you a general rule so that I can understand. Like if I'm setting out my goal that fasting means. I'm not going to necessarily enjoy my meals. Fasting means, you know, I'm not really necessarily going to look forward to eating my food. Fasting means when I eat, it's more about sustenance and fuel than about enjoyment or pleasure, right? And so then therefore, if I have a question, is this thing fasting or not? Why not just say, okay, I won't eat it. (laughs) Even if it it might be fasting. (laughs) Like, How about just not eat it? (laughs) So I think that's... So we're, for example, the 55 during Lent, sure. the 55 days, I'm supposed to, for the entire 55 days, not enjoy a single piece of food that I put in my mouth or what? I mean, I, I mean, I, in an ideal world, that's the, the goal, the, the, in an ideal world, the, the concept of fasting is that I give up my, my bodily like pleasures and desires for God. You know, like in the in, in the Psalms where it's when it's talking about prayer and says, let the lifting up my hands be as an evening sacrifice. So even the, the action of lifting my hands is a sacrifice. How much more when I say to God, you know, what, I'm giving up my pleasures, my, my, my a small worldly pleasure and actually temporarily. Right. I'm giving it up for a period of time. Oh, it's a long period of time in, in total, in total. <laughs> sure. It's a long period of time, but, but it, it, the time ends and then I enjoy and eat whatever I, whatever I want to eat. The thing is, I, I really think there needs to be a paradigm shift. Like I, w- one of the things that frustrates me about fast fasting is people will come and they'll be like, oh, oh my gosh, here comes the Lent and I don't feel like it and I don't want to. And, and actually, you know, and maybe this is not like a, the best answer that sometimes I was like, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. You know, like I like I, I don't know why I don't understand why people are begrudgingly doing something that is beneficial for you. If you don't want to do it, okay, don't. But you're the one missing out. I wish people would understand fasting. You benefit from it. It's something to look forward to because I can achieve something. I can I can gain virtues in my life. I can offer my 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 body as a sacrifice to God. I can learn like you mentioned discipline. I can walk in the in the in the footsteps of, you know, the prophets who fasted or Christ who fasted or all the apostles who fasted. You know? There's something I should look forward to. I should be eager towards. I mean, so in terms of the people that say, you know, they don't want to fast or and your and your answer is okay, then don't. I think that can lead you down 
two paths. And I think you're, you're thinking that there's a third path that people <laughs> hopefully will go towards this one. But oh, when I, when I say then don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to be very flippant, but what, what I guess what I'm saying is like, wh- why I should really think to take time. I mean, think about for yourself, you, you know, you said, well, once I read this book, it made me feel like, oh, this is kind of why we do it. And then what did it, you, you even said, you said like, what did it make you do? It's like, oh, now I want to do this. And yeah. I actually want to do it even more intensely and more focused than I had ever thought of before because now I know the why and now I know the benefits that are that are awaiting me if I do it yeah and I and I think a lot of that is just the like the excitement of something new type you know every time you do something new you're sure super into it and I'm sure give me two months of (laughs) trying to do it the right way and I'll be like I don't know if this is you know sure but um I think I think that is a, a big disconnect in in what we're taught in terms of what fasting is and and how to do it and I, I really don't think at least f- for me I was never really interested in the why that we fast uh, aside from the discipline part. And I mean I mean I think I think looking at maybe looking at scripture and seeing why in scripture people passed it in the past would would give us a good indicator of like why should I do it here in the future. Like if you, if you think about it, like uh, King David, when he was repenting from sin, he fasted. The prophets, many of the prophets fasted, like Moses fasted before receiving the Ten Commandments. Elijah fasted on the mountain before hearing God in the wind. The, the people of Israel fasted, right? They had prescribed fasts. They also fasted like the people of, for example, the people of Nineveh, they fasted. And we mentioned that we do Jonah's fast. I mean, that that's in honor or in commemoration of the people of Nineveh. Uh, the people of Israel fasted in the time of Esther. Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, he fasted before his ministry. St. John the Baptist fasted before he you know, paved the way uh, for, for Christ. The apostles, after the, the resurrection, they were fasting and praying and waiting for God to come. St. Paul, he says, in fast, I was in fasting often for the sake of the church. And so like you, you see it over and over. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, when the bridegroom is here with you, but when the bridegroom is taken away, then my then the disciples will fast. So like you see it repeated over and over and over again for a multitude of reasons, right? That some of them were fasting for repentance, like I mentioned with uh, the people of Nineveh. Some of them were fasting in preparation, like when we see our Lord Jesus Christ and we see even like if you can maybe consider St. John the Baptist preparing himself for being God's forerunner, he was he was living a life of fasting. So you see them doing it for different reasons, and 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 you see it uh, in in various ways, and always benefiting the person in one way or another. And so when you see that, how do you how do you not help but think like, okay, I want I want a piece of that. I want I want part of that, even if on some small level. Sure. So my question about that is, when they say that you know all these people fasted in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, when when they say they fasted, did they you know, not eat meat or was it like, you know, no food or water or like what, what were the ways in which that they fast, you know? Yeah, that's a good question. I I think like, um, there's, there's uh, several different types of fasts in that's mentioned in paradise. Oh, I mean, sorry, mentioned in, in, uh, in scripture. And I I said paradise because Adam and Eve, they, they were living as vegetarians. They were, they actually God gave them to eat of all the fruits of the of the trees except for one. He didn't mention, you know, go take a cow and slaughter it and and, and eat. Right. So they were they were they were vegetarian. Also, <clears throat> when when God like had the the people in the wilderness, right, and they were they were um, hungry. What did God give them? Do you remember what God gave them in the wilderness? Wasn't, wasn't it manna? Or yeah, the, the manna. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that was bread. When did he give them? He he eventually eventually gave them meat. Why did he give them meat? Because they complained. Because they were like, "Oh, back in Egypt we had meat and onions and and stuff, and like now we're only eat- all we have is this manna, which is literally bread from heaven that was given to them by God." And they're like, "It's not good enough," you know. And he gave them meat, and he actually told he punished them. He said, "You know, I'm going to give you meat until it's going coming through your nostrils. You're going to be sick of the meat because he he's trying to teach them that like you you are living in such a fleshly way." In, in the book of Daniel, we see Daniel when he's fasting, him and the three youth, it says that they ate vegetables. So they were eating vegetarian food. Even Ezekiel, it's, it mentions in the book, in Pope Shinoda's book, he mentions when he was fasting, it says also take for yourself wheat, barley, beans, lentil, millet, and spelt. So like vegetarian food was typically, e- either either vegetarian food or actually not eating at all. Like our Lord Jesus Christ, when he fasted, he didn't eat. Or Moses, when he fasted, he wasn't eating anything. 
So it's typically been from scripture, abstaining from food and then also uh, vegetarian food. Is isn't abstaining from from food dangerous? I guess couldn't couldn't it be damaging to the body? I think in the way that we, it's so funny that you say that because like actually probably one of the biggest uh, fads that are going around now is intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about intermittent fasting. You know, me as a Coptic Orthodox priest, I'm like, we've been doing that forever. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, you know, only like now it's coming out like, oh, this is actually something healthy, you know? And and, and it's almost like the church is saying, well, yeah, yeah, it is. We we, we know, like we've been doing that for quite some time. So I I don't really buy the argument that like uh, not eating for a certain period of time. You know, I will say there are some people in some situations that you're right. And actually, in Pope Shunura, in his book, he mentions, he even talks about, it depends on your profession. For example, how long I could maybe go without eating. If I was a construction worker mm. in the heat of the day, it's 110 degrees, I'm working in Arizona or something, probably not wise for me to not eat or drink until, you know, 6 p.m., right? But, that, but, that's, but that's a certain situation that needs a certain, uh, you know, accommodation. Mm-hmm. But generally... You know, no one's going to, you know, be really adversely affected if I don't eat till noon or I don't eat till three o'clock or whatever the case may be. You know, the funny thing is like a lot of times we do that on our own. Not eat? Yeah, sure. If I have a busy day or if something's like I, I've had like one thing after another, I didn't have a chance to eat. And I say, well, I didn't have a chance to eat. And, and no one, you know, it's not like it's something that is like completely detrimental to me where like I couldn't survive. Yeah, I think I think the difference there is uh, I'm sure this person who forgets to eat is they're making it known to the world that I haven't eaten since, <laughs> sure. you know, whenever. Sure, Christ talks uh, about that. He's like, when we fast, we're supposed to do it in a way that's like secret so that we get our blessings from him. Yeah, and so, the, you know, one of the craziest things that I read, well, not the craziest, but one of the things that stood out when I read this book was uh, how you should be happy during the periods of fast. Like you should be looking forward to fasting Yes. And uh, actually, when the fast is over, you should be upset and, and look forward to the, the next th- one. The thing is, if I look at, you know, he, probably, he talks about in his, his book, consecrating a fast. Mm-hmm. So he, 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 Pope Shun is talking about how fasting, the days of fasting are special, consecrated, set apart. That's what consecrated means. It means that it's set apart. Mm-hmm. And so if I think to myself, like actually one of the, one of the ones that I, I really feel this way the most about it's like the fast of Nineveh or Jonah's fast. It's three days. It's so short. So you think to yourself, okay, for those three days, I, I really, you know what? I want to practice some ascetic practices that I don't normally do. Or I want to stay away from sin in a, in a very like uh, diligent way. You know, I, I want these three days to be special, to be to be dedicated to God, to be a time where I get close to God. And if I look at periods of fasting that way, this is my time to get really close to God. Then I'm going to be excited about it, Right. And then if I think about the opposite, my non-fasting days, maybe I would be more inclined to be relaxed or more inclined to like sort of fall away. Actually, I, you know, for people who have fasted regularly, a lot of times, I, I take it from me as someone who hears a lot of confessions, during the Holy 50 days where there's no fasting permitted, a lot of you are like, yeah, I, I stopped praying. I don't read my Bible as much as I used to. The sins of the flesh are really kind of uh, affecting me a lot more than they usually do. Is because when I'm permissive in even something small as what I eat, I become permissive in all sort of bodily, you know, desires. So how how can you? Uh, I'm I'm struggling with this concept because how can you? Uh, I guess know the things you're supposed to do. Even for example, Jonah's fast for three days. Like I'm gonna do this, this, and this different, and I'm I'm gonna be very strict and really try to get closer to God. How I. It's hard for me to to go in with that mindset, knowing that in the fourth day, it's just like, okay, well, that was cool. Now I can do what I was doing before. No, the hope the hope is that I'm like trying to establish habits or trying to establish change in my life, right? It, it's like a focused time, like a revival for myself, like a spiritual revival for myself. You know, I set a goal or I set plans for myself. This Lent, I'm going to tackle you know, my, my, my having a, a, a tongue that is, that is not bridled, right? And so I'm going to work really hard to sort of think before I speak. And that doesn't mean sort of like on, 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 on the day after Easter, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm saying whatever I want, I'm, I'm saying four letter words and all that. You know, that's not the point, right? Uh-huh. The point is that hopefully by, you know, the, the period of training myself, I would have maybe by God's grace achieved something that I can take to the rest of my, for the rest of my life. So I can I can see that for the longer fasts, but for the specifically shorter fasts, 
It's kind of unrealistic, especially because since it's so short, you're probably short. so much more aggressive. Sure. So now you're advocating for a longer fast. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just, I, for, for shorter fasts, I, w- I would feel like that maybe the, the goal might be slightly different, right? So for a shorter fast, I might say to myself, I will do something that is very beneficial for me, but maybe not as sustainable. So like, for example, Jonah's fast three days. What if I said to myself, you know, those three days, each day I'm going to read 15 chapters of the Bible, okay? It's like, sure, that, maybe that's a lot to read for people who are not used to reading the Bible regularly, but it's three days, so I, I can do it for three days. But if I told you to do that for 55 days, or if I told you to do it for 40 days, you, you might be like, well, this is too much for me. So it's a good opportunity for me to be a little bit more like, actually, if you think about the analogy of working out, like there are a couple of ways to lift weights, right? I could I could do three sets of uh, of like eight or 12, like 12 reps, but it's going to be a lower weight. Mm -hmm. Or I could do one set of like three reps, but it's going to be like a huge amount of weight. Right. And I could still work my, and that works the muscle differently and helps you have grow differently. So, I mean, it's, it's the same concept. That's why actually even like in the wisdom of the church, we are given different fasts with different lengths and different goals. Okay. I, I, I like that analogy. I think it, uh, it applies. Um, on, on the topic of uh, short fast or long fast and how yeah. we do different things, how can we, this is uh, just coming from me, how can we take fasting in the way that it's supposed to be done so seriously and so, um, uh, I guess, aesthetically is the, is the word, like truly in the way that it was meant to be done for two thirds of the year? I feel like that's a little, unreal, a little unrealistic to to do it for that long and and continually grow in that time. I feel like it would lose its value and, and we would kind of revert to a place where it's like... But the thing is, like, each fast has in between of it periods of time where I'm not fasting. So it's sort of like the, the, the there is periods of intense focus and periods of uh, of less intense focus. So there's like in a kind of ebb and flow in, in sort of the liturgical season of the church. So so for me, for example, if I'm... Uh, if I, the, the, the strictest and longest fast the Great Lent or mm-hmm. the Great Fast. It's immediately followed by 50 days of no fasting at all. And, and I want you to think about this. 50 days is, that's almost two months, right? Mm-hmm. Two months of, I, I, I don't worry even about what I'm eating whatsoever, okay? And so by the time, <clears throat> by the time you get towards the end of those 50 days, actually for, for us who've been like sort of sp- spiritually like, uh, attuned and used to uh, the the ebbs and flows of fasting, by the end of the 50 days, it's like, I, I want to get back to some sort of uh, regimen. I want to get back to some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, strictness or, or some sort of control over what I eat. Because again, when I think about fasts as fasts are when is an opportunity for me to sort of supercharge my relationship with God to get even closer to him then all of a sudden it's not this burden that is like oh, here it comes again it's more like I'm eager to do it yeah so the entire time that I've been asking these like targeted questions I've been thinking of fasting as like no food and abstaining from food and I really haven't even gotten in like when you when I heard when I just heard this answer it makes a lot more sense if you get the spiritual side of if it. If I tell you the reason we fast mm-hmm. is because I love God, okay? And when I when I fast, I'm offering myself up to God in love and I am working to become closer to him through attaining virtues, through removing sins. Then I then I I can only look at fasting as a, an opportunity, something that is uh, like thank God that the church gives me this chance to 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 get closer to him in a special way, to consecrate days, to make days special to him. So that I can, you know, grow in my spirituality in, in in a focused way. I think that's a good transition into uh, the spiritual benefits of fasting. Oh, good. So uh, we're done talking about the specifics of. I think uh, I think we'll, we'll come back to it. I think because <laughs> I, I don't. I, I'm sure I'll think of something else along the way. But I think uh, this is probably going to be the most beneficial part of. Uh, if anyone's sure. going to learn something today, it's going to be from the spiritual side. I think. So I think probably when we're fasting, we should think about certain uh goals that we're having for ourselves or certain things that we're trying to achieve while we're fasting for like first thing that is something that uh we see always that fasting is accompanied by prayer okay so like prayer and fasting are connected so in periods of fasts i should do my best to be more diligent in my prayers maybe increase my prayers 
So my, my, my fasting is not just a change in diet. Also with fasting, I, uh, I usually accompany fasting with prostrations. For those who are not familiar, that just means like I'm, I'm, I'm prostrating myself, bowing down to the ground. And, and sometimes uh, alongside that, I may say some a small prayer like the Jesus prayer, my Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And, and this is uh, an opportunity for me to express repentance, which is another big aspect of, of fasting. Fasting is usually accompanied by repentance. It's an opportunity for me to repent, for me to think about my sins and ask for God's forgiveness. Uh, fasting also gives me a chance to, you know, in an ideal world when I fast, my food is simple, my food is quick, easy to prepare, light. So that should, you know, ideally give me more time for spiritual activity. You know, how many people come to me and say, you know, when I, I, I can't, I don't pray because I don't have time or I didn't read my Bible, I, just, I don't have time to do it. And I'm trying to tell you that the church is saying to you, you know, that half an hour that you spent prepping your food, you know, I'm, I'm going to cut that down to five minutes for you. And I, I just made for you 25 minutes for you to be able to pray or to read your Bible or whatever the case may be. Also, when I fast, and actually the church fathers talk about this, St. John Chrysostom especially talks about this. When we're fasting with food, it should remind me to fast from sin. So I should, my tongue should fast by what I say and how I say it and uh, whatever. My thoughts should fast from evil. You know, if I have an evil thought, I should reject it. You know, I should be, I should be, my whole body should participate in the fast. All my senses should participate in the fast. It's not just about a change in diet. St. John Chrysostom, he talks about, he says, how can you say that you're fasting when you eat the flesh of your brother? And he means like, if I, I I'm, I'm rude to them, I'm disrespectful, I'm, I'm, I'm calling them out, cursing them, calling them names. I'm, I'm eating their flesh. I'm not fasting. And actually, and the other, another aspect, most always, fasting is accompanied. I told you that as fasting is accompanied by worship, by prayer. But also fasting is typically accompanied by almsgiving. Almsgiving is essentially giving to the poor, giving to people who are in need. And when I eat less and eat simply, and, and probably eat like less expensively, I should take that, that money, that savings, that simplicity, and, and offer then that to those who are less fortunate. So there are many things I can do to, my, to, to enhance my fast that's not just a matter of changing your diet. That, that's why I said in the beginning, like I feel like the food part is, that's yeah. the easy part. I think some people would uh, disagree about the, uh, the the price of uh, fasting food and uh, well I mean the things it depends like if I'm if I'm trying to um, satisfy every craving and urge you're right it's gonna be more expensive you know like an impossible burger at uh, <laughs> Burger King is uh, I mm. think probably like three four bucks more than, than a regular whopper mm -hmm. or whatever so what's my goal if my goal is to satisfy every craving you're right if my goal is to eat simply, and, and, and sort of as, as, as un, uh, sort of, uh, yeah, I guess as simply as, as I possibly can, then, then, uh, you know, I can eat, I can survive on, you know, rice and beans and fruits and vegetables and, and be just fine. So I, I know, um, a lot of people to prepare to fast and to then break the fast, they go all out. It's like a day of we have oh, to hit like the day before the, the fast. day before the fast we have to hit every food sure. group that we know we're not going to be able to eat in the <laughs> yeah um and, and even actually the catholic church you know mardi gras means fat tuesday they do it right before ash wednesday because you know back when they were a little bit more stricter in their fasts fat tuesday mardi gras came from like oh we got to eat all the fatty stuff that because they're not going to eat the next because they're not going to eat it for the next yeah for the next 40 days for lent i didn't know that so okay is that a is that is that right or is that wrong? wrong? <laughs> yeah. Are we allowed I, actually, to do Actually, I think, I think that's, uh, it brings up a, a, a small point that I want to talk about is that even when we are not fasting, we ought to be moderate in our eating. So like gluttony is a sin whether I'm fasting or not fasting, <laughs> right? So like uh, I could be fasting and be gluttonous mm -hmm. and I could be not fasting and I could be gluttonous. And so I, I should be measured in what I'm eating regardless of whether I'm fasting or not. You know, it, am I saying is it wrong for me to you know go to a favorite dinner or favorite restaurant or something the night before a fast? No, I'm not saying that by any means. But I'm saying like the the day before a fast doesn't give me sort of carte blanche to like just eat whatever I want or do whatever I want because well I'm about to spend the next 
two weeks, you know, fasting or the next month fasting or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And, and part of, uh, part of the section of the book, uh, it says, do not eat greedily. And then it says, uh, we brought it up a little earlier, but it said, uh, you, you should, uh, the prophet Daniel said, I ate no pleasant food. And it's like, actually, I love that verse when I was, when I was rereading this book for this and I saw that he said, uh, I ate no pleasant food. And I wish we would think about that when we're fasting. To just, you know, eat very simply, eat what's put in front of me, you know? One of the things, one, actually, one small spiritual practice I could, I could do for myself when I'm fasting is whatever is presented to me, I should eat. Uh, like, you know, I shouldn't be picky. Like, like if, I'm, if I eat at home, you know, and my wife makes something that's not my favorite. She made spaghetti and I was, you know, in the mood for, I don't know, I was in the mood for lentils or something. Mm-hmm. So I, I shouldn't be like, well, could you make some lentils so we could eat it, you know, instead of the spaghetti? I'll just eat what's in front of me, you know, to be not picky in my food. Eating no pleasant food means I'm not deriving pleasure from food for this, especially for this period of time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm reminding myself that true pleasure comes from the joy of my relationship with God more than just any of my materialistic needs. Why is there such a such a connection or focus on food and pleasure like uh, i'm sure there are a lot of other things that we could give up that would be much harder to give up and um why why does it seem like food is like the overarching yeah com- that, that actually is a good thing. question like why why did we decide yeah. to give up this why couldn't it have been something else the thing is like food is something that is obviously very connected to our bodily desires we need food right we need food to to survive and so, like, I, I think that when we deprive ourselves of maybe certain kinds of food or food for a certain amount of time, it trains us to know that, like, my spirit is what drives me and my decision making. And that is going to be the motor behind who I, who I am. My, my fleshly desires aren't what's going to push me. And, and, and food is probably the easiest, most concrete way to do that. We have a lot of bodily desires, right? We have desire for sleep. We have desire for sexual intimacy. We have desire for food. And, and so like when we, when we take away from ourselves for a certain period of time, certain types of food or a certain uh, amount of food or whatever the case may be, it teaches me uh, discipline of body teaches me that my body is not the, the, the driver should be my spirit. That's the driver. So the, I think the book makes a pretty uh, direct connection between when your body is like in a in a lower state, then yes. the spirit rises yes. and stuff like. Can I, you-, I, you know, I do want to make a point before we like move from that. It's like I want to say that like defeating the body or vanquishing the body is not the goal in itself. Okay, that that's that's actually like the means for for like my 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 soul to to sort of or my spirit to really be uh, to flourish. It's not like a, I don't want people to come away with like a, this concept that I, this is some sort of like uh, some achievements like, oh, like I, I made it to 12 or I could make it to 3 p.m. to fast or I made it to 5 p.m. You know what I mean? It's not it's not like that. No one's going to give you a badge or a medal at the end of the day mm-hmm. for for uh, for achieving that. But but he Poshuna mentions in his book and, and, and I agree is like when I deprive my body. It reminds me that like the, my soul is what's important. My spirit is what's important. That's, and actually you can see this very practically. One of my, actually, to be honest with you, one of my favorite holidays of the year, Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving primarily about? Eating. Eating. And, and actually, what does everybody do? Most people do after, after they eat in Thanksgiving. Sleep. Sleep. Like you wake up, you, you eat. I don't know about you guys when you guys you have dinner and stuff or whatever like that. But you eat your Thanksgiving meal. You take a nap, you wake up, you eat more leftovers, you sleep again. And it's sort of like this whole day of like nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think personally, Thanksgiving is is like the worst holiday. <laughs> I hate Thanksgiving food. I don't. I, oh, really? No, whatever. I love actually no. for me. I, I'll be honest. I, I really I do love Thanksgiving food. But I but I, I guess my, my I'm not saying that I'm anti Thanksgiving or anything like that. My, my point is like when 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 we eat a lot, it tends to make us lethargic. It tends to make us sort of like. I want to eat and I want to sleep. And then I don't really have such energy or drive to, you know, like even when people think about like, take away religion for a second, mm-hmm. when people change them, their diets and they eat, they, they say, I feel lighter. I feel like I'm more quick on my feet. I feel more alert, more attentive. Right. And that's what Pop Shun was mentioning in the book is like when, when I, when I'm, when I'm a little bit less like, uh, 
I don't know if the word maybe fruitful. Less, yeah, maybe less full. Like I, I, I'm able to be a little bit more alert, a little bit more attentive, a little bit more awake, a little bit more sort of able to concentrate. Even not even concentrate like uh, just even concentrate on like my spiritual life. I, I would argue that by saying a lot of people say the same thing when they do the carnivore diet and all all they eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner is meat. Just steak and I don't know too much about the carnivore diet. I'm not I've, that familiar. I've heard people say the same. Like they say, like I eat till I'm full, and then I'm I lose weight, and I'm well. Keep it, keep in mind, like when I'm when I'm talking about fasting, and it's maybe the benefit of how it makes my my body feel. My primary goal isn't for my body, right? right? right. Like I'm I'm not trying to sort of send get, you know put out there like a some sort of best diet practices for a healthy <laughs> living, right? Right, right? The the primary goal of fasting is a spiritual goal, not 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 a physical goal. Right. Um, so I think uh, I don't want to get into the the hunger part that you said you wanted to talk about a little bit. Oh, yes. Um, I think there's a, at least f- for me, um, when I'm hungry, it feels like the, like if I don't get food now, <laughs> I might die. That, sure. that, there, I, there's been points where I've gotten to thinking that. I, I know it's a little dramatic, but I think... Uh, why, why shouldn't we be afraid of being hungry? Well, like actually, Poshuna mentions in his book, many of the people when they fasted, they fasted until they were hungry. Like our Lord Jesus Christ, when he fasted, it says after he was fasting that he was hungry. When, um, uh, when he's fasting, he's fasting until he's hungry. So it's not something that I have to be like um, afraid of. It's not something that is necessarily, necessarily bad, you know? Poshuna mentions St. Peter, and he says that he was fasting and he became very hungry and would have eaten. And so it's like, it's okay. It's okay. And actually even our Lord Jesus Christ in the Beatitudes, he says, blessed are those who hunger, Mm -hmm. you know, for you shall be filled. If you think about, Poshina also mentions in the the book, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. If you're not familiar with the parable, like there was a rich guy and and Lazarus and the rich man, Lazarus wanted food. He was poor. And he begged the the rich man for food and he wouldn't give it, he he didn't give him any. And the rich man died and Lazarus died. And the Lazarus was found in the bosom of Abraham in paradise. And the rich man was in Hades being tormented because he was um, not generous to, to, to the poor man. And, and actually, Pope Shunna says, this poor man's hunger was his means of entering into paradise. You know, he, 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 was, he was poor and he was hungry and he was comforted by Abraham. And so like, when, when the people in the, of Israel were there in the wilderness, they were hungry. Like, I guess, you know, his focus, and, and I agree with it, is, is like, when, I, when I'm feeling, I'm talking about like a little hungry or, or like hungry. I'm not talking about like You're somebody about who's starving yeah. or someone's going to, you know, pass out or something like that. No, I just mean to have a feeling of need or want. Okay. So th- that way I can understand that like, actually it's a reminder of my own body's fragility. Right. I can forget sometimes that my own like... Mm, my own health or whatever, that's not really, you know, in my control. And so when I feel that fragility, I, I learn my limits. I know my limits. And so I know that I'm not this person that is just in control of every single aspect of my life. Pope Shunu actually even talks about how prayer is better when you're hungry. Yeah, I remember reading that part in the book. I thought... What that, did you think about that? That um, the, the thing that really grabbed... My attention was the the, the two minute prayer while hung, two minutes of prayer while hungry are better than two hours when full. I, I was it really put like puts. I don't think he means I'd rather you pray two minutes right, than right. two hours, but <laughs> it, it just I think it, it like it really shows that like how different I guess your your perspective really changes because of hunger and 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 all yeah. these things and it can actually you know when you read this book it's really nice it tells you. A lot of things to sort of work on even within my fast. Very small things. Like, for example, he says, if I'm, if I'm abstaining from food, I shouldn't try to, like, sleep away the hours so that I don't feel like I'm fasting. I should, I should be awake. I should be sort of feeling that I'm hungry. You know, that, that's part of gaining a benefit in fasting. It's yeah, a very high level of spirituality that he's mentioning in the book. I, yeah, and I think there was, there was some other things where it was like, uh, even when you get, you know, after a period of, abstaining from food when you get your food in front of you like just wait, just a, wait couple, a minute wait a couple minutes like yeah. it's like who who would think that way yeah like who would be like you know what i'm just most uh, of the time when we think about like being uh like being like a pharisee and doing the letter of the law we're thinking of it always from the opposite end what i mean by that is like 
let's say I've agreed with my spiritual father, I'm not going to eat until noon, okay? And then, like, I get my food and it gets finished at 11.55 or 11.45, right? Most people are like, well, don't be a Pharisee. Like, just eat. It's fine. No big deal. Actually, Pope Shin is saying the same thing, but from the opera spectrum. He's like, don't be legalistic and a Pharisee. Like, wait a couple more minutes. It's okay. We can wait, we can wait a couple minutes and, and, and break your fast after. You know, so I think sometimes we always think about it from the opposite end. How can I make it easier on myself? How can I cut corners? How can I how can I say that I'm fasting without, you know, exactly fasting? And Pope is sort of encouraging us to look at it from the other perspective. How do I how do I look at this as a spiritual thing, not a legalistic thing? Yeah, no, it's easier said than done because so. we're always looking out for like our immediate benefit all the more need see you know you mentioned the meaning like how do we why do we have so many fasts and like how do we doesn't it lose its value and it's like if you see how pervasive the problem of me is in 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 my life like how i'm focused on me and my comfort and what i need and what's going to make me feel better then you would understand how, how necessary it is that that this is happening and happening frequently yeah i uh on the topic of uh like the the whole hunger thing, I, I thought about something that uh, I guess I want to want to ask about. There are certain like um, medications or things that that people take or like they're prescribed, sure. obviously. Sure. But they stunt hunger; like it makes you not hungry. Oh, sure. At all. I don't even know what I'm trying to ask, but it, it's. Almost like you think like they're cheating or something because they're because they're not they're, not cheating because it's not it's not they have to take this medicine sure. so it's like is there something how do they how do they achieve that level of you of, know actually that reminds me of a story I had a, a person who came to me and said you know Father Thira, I'm vegan like they're vegan mm-hmm. and they were telling me like well the fast for me like changing foods is is really not I don't I don't need to change foods <laughs> I eat vegan all the time right. And and I gave them you know different exercises to do because I think the the benefits of fasting go beyond just a change of food. Mm-hmm. So we talked about you know reducing the amount of food they ate or when they ate. We talked about their time to abstain, things like that. We talked about like taking away from themselves like favorite foods that they that they enjoy eating. The the concept of fasting, like the the church gives us a guideline about how to fast. That's why like uh, you know maybe we'll, like we should probably touch on this. Why can't I just fast however I want? You know, mm-hmm. like maybe I really don't care for steak and I really, really, really like, you know, uh, spaghetti. Right. Shouldn't my fast be a fast of, you know, eating steak every day and, and, and not, 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 not spaghetti. And, and actually, no, part of, part of fasting is I fast in obedience to mm-hmm. the, to the, to the fasting rules laid down, uh, by the church. And again, those, those rules weren't made arbitrarily. We see in scripture that the fasting was a, a vegetarian or vegan fast, mm-hmm. but I, I fast according to, to the rules. Are, are there maybe people who need exceptions or, or issues, particular issues, or like I said, like person who was a vegan? And mm-hmm. Yeah, of course there are. But th- those are the exceptions, n- not the rule. Sometimes we make for ourselves, the exception becomes the rule, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I think also an uh, important thing in this book is that uh, there, are, there are exceptions to the food side of it from like a like a medical sure of perspective course. of course people who are people who are sick people who have medications to take people who have uh, like specific instructions uh of what to eat or when to eat it of course all of that stuff you should discuss with your spiritual father that because again the, the concept is not i'm trying to hurt myself right, you right. Know, the, the, the concept is that i'm trying to deprive my body for a time for a period for a spiritual reason you know and again mm-hmm. out of love for god I actually, I hope, maybe it's a lot to say maybe by the end of the podcast, but I hope people would maybe listen to this and I hope people would maybe read this book and, and maybe get excited to fast, you know, get excited like, hey, I, I'm, I, can, I can gain some spiritual benefit here. There's something that I can grow. There's something maybe missing in my life. Maybe if someone who's even like, maybe like you said, like yourself, like I haven't fasted in a long time or, or I've never fasted before, or maybe someone who, maybe they're not even part of the church and they're thinking to themselves, hey, maybe I should try this and, and see, I, will this help me increase my prayers? Will this help me sort of uh, dive into God's word in a, in a, in a deeper way than, I, than I'm normally accustomed to? And, and I, I'm convinced, I, I know for a fact that this definitely will be helpful because it's not like, uh, I'm not saying that based on just my own lived experience. I'm saying that based on 
centuries of experience and, and, and hundreds of years of the church and scripture itself showing us that fasting has benefits. That's one of the beauties of the Orthodox Church. I don't come and sort of invent ways of spiritual life. I follow in the ways of, the, like I'm discipled under my fathers who teach me like over the generations and over the centuries what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the, when I first was thinking about like why we fast the way that we do, I, I think probably a lot of it has to just do with what the people before us did. And we're just kind of mirroring what they did because it, because it worked, yeah. you know what I mean? Because it worked. When, when, when the people of Nineveh fasted, God had mercy on them, right? When, when the people of Israel fasted during the time of Esther, God saved his people, you know? So like, but when, when the apostles fasted in the beginning of their ministry, they had the most successful evangelism that we've ever had in the history of the church. So, so it's, it's like, how many times are we going to see the, the results being the way that they are before we say, you know what, we should try the same thing? So how, how, how can I keep God or, uh, you know, that, that at the core of my fast, how can I keep that in my vision? Cause I feel like, um, am I get caught up in just the food and it becomes just food or what do you mean? Yeah. And, and I guess oh, like over, maybe in the beginning, it's, it's very easy to, to say like this, I'm doing this for God and I really want to grow spiritually yeah. and then kind of just as time progresses, you, you tend to veer off of sure. the path. So how, how can you re like recenter yourself to, to keep that focus there when you need to? I think it's good for myself when I, when I'm beginning a fast that I'm also setting for myself, uh, spiritual goals and things to do in addition to just my change in diet. So for example, many churches, they will have extra services, extra liturgies that they pray during the week that they don't, don't normally pray. Or even yourself, you know, maybe you're accustomed to praying, going to church on Sundays. And so say, well, you know what, I'm going to try to go to catch church maybe an extra day of this week. Or I'm going to increase the amount of times that I read the Bible. Or I'm going to say the Jesus prayer during the day, uh, even though I'm maybe not normally accustomed to doing that. But maybe during the fast, I'm going to do it. So there are a lot of practices that I would encourage you to, you know, to speak to your spiritual father, to get ideas about like what specific things I can do so that I can... Uh, I keep God at the center of my fast because actually I don't know how we didn't really talk about this, but there's definitely ways to fast that I do not benefit at all. If I, if I fast in a prideful way and mm -hmm. I, if I fast for a vainglory, I fast so that people know that I'm fasting. I fast out of routine. You know, th there are ways that I can fast that I would do all the right things food wise, but I am not gaining any benefit whatsoever. Because God is not at the center. Because of God's not at the center mm -hmm. of it. And actually sometimes God is not involved at all in it. Yeah, that, was, that that happened to be the part of the book that I was on, and it was like the the un uh, the fasts that are like rejected or like yeah. it's not not beneficial for you at all. Yes, um, and th that's definitely like that's definitely like possible for us. Like if I'm not careful about how I'm I'm participating in the fast and what I'm doing, then definitely I could fast to my own detriment or to my own judgment. And I think, do you think? This is kind of a personal question, but do you think most people fast that like without God at the center or maybe in a... In a well, I would say it's easier to do that. It's easier to do that. So if I have, I have to be careful, you know, even in, in the Old Testament, God says, I'm rejecting your fast because of true fasting and he gives out what it means. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest things he says is generosity to the poor. And so I got to think about how, you know, how am I fasting and is God in the center of my fast? Or am I just doing it as a routine? Am I just doing it because it's what I've been taught? I'm doing it because of what, what I've been told to do. By the way, the, that kind of those answers usually aren't sustainable. That's the kind of person who maybe they fasted for a year, two years or whatever, and they kind of are, are done with it because they never, uh, like you said, I think when you read it and you understood some of the things about why we do it, that sort of really makes a light bulb go on in my head and, and sort of encourages me to continue. Yeah, I, I just going through and reading it, the the way that they make it sound in in this book it's like how, when i read it i was like how could you not want to do these can i things? tell you I, I would say that this is this is actually what orthodoxy is in a nutshell i see my teacher and i'm being discipled under him and he's showing me for example when he fasts and he's showing and he sees like oh this is what i feel when i fast and this is what happens to me and, and then it, it makes you think to yourself 
I, I want that. I want that same thing. Show me how to do that same thing. Or when I, you know, I, I've had people in my life that like, they read the Bible and it's like, they're reading a different Bible than me. You know, they're, they're reading this, they're, they're reading the Bible and they're so nourished and they're so like, they grow from it so much. And I'm like, wow, teach me how to read the Bible the way that you're reading the Bible, that I can benefit from it in the, in the way that you're benefiting from it. And that life of discipleship is what orthodoxy is, is, is really about. Yeah. I remember, um, I, I, this just popped in my head, but I remember I was listening to a podcast of, it was like a religious podcast, but it's not Coptic Orthodox, but it's still like, yeah, it's similar. And, um, the, the person on the show was saying that like, he had this really bad problem and he, he kept praying about it and he couldn't like, it was never resolved. And he's for one, some reason or another, he tried to fast and it almost like instantaneously. And that kind of made me think of the, like the, the casting out demons with fasting yeah. and prayer. So yeah, yeah. So it's not even just like a like a benefit for your spirituality, but like there's actually a whole nother avenue of like benefits from fasting and prayer that are it's almost like a stronger yeah, I mean, that's what Christ essentially says when the disciples were like, how come we couldn't cast out this demon? Right. He says, well, actually, this kind can't come out except by prayer and fasting. And so he's ostensibly he's saying there the fasting sort of raises your prayer into a different level, a higher level. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if God's saying that, if God himself is telling us this, how, how are we not encouraged to sort of participate, to, to have that higher level of prayer? I just want to eat cheese. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. <laughs> that's the thing. I think, you know, when you think, when you put it in those terms, it's like, well, that's kind of seems silly, right? You know, yeah, how can, yeah, it almost seems like, how could you argue against How can you compare yeah. the two? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I really think um, people should, should read this book. <laughs> to be honest, I know I sound like I'm a, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, we got we don't even get any uh, plugs for reading the, putting the book. It's a free PDF anyway. <laughs> so I know some questions that that some people wanted me to ask, and uh, I'm also curious about, um, which probably not the right time to ask now that we know all the benefits. And it seems like why would no, you ask this? But questions are always good. Um, in terms of uh, f taking communion during fasts. If yes. I am not actively fasting, I am not permitted to take communion. That's something definitely I should speak about with my spiritual father. In general, the thing is about, we, we didn't touch on this too much, but I think it's important. When we fast as a church, we're, we're fasting, we're united in our fasting. And just like when we take communion, we are united with Christ and, and united with one another in the body. And so we are doing things together we are fasting together communing together okay so we are uh, as we're supposed to be participating in these things as one okay that's that's why we have prescribed fast you know like i think most christian denominations would not deny fasting is important mm -hmm. what i think a lot of christian denominations would say is nobody should tell me when to fast i should fast when i feel like fasting or when i need to fast but actually we see communal fasts all the time we see the, the apostles fasted community. I, we talked about Nineveh. We talked about um, Esther and, and the Israelites. Like there were many times where they consecrated a time to fast. And the church does that to unite us. And so when I'm not participating in the fast, I am disconnecting myself from the rest of the body of Christ. I can't give you a, a straight yes or no because, you know, I speak, should speak to my spiritual father. There are people who maybe they're not able to fast. Maybe they're just getting into fasting and they're, and they're struggling with it. You know, and the church pastorally wants to care for those people as they are growing. But, but, but in general, yes, I, I should be fasting alongside the church in order to commune with the church. And so then tying that question into the next one is not fasting a sin, I would assume. It depends on how I'd want to define sin, right? If I, if I, if I take the definition of St. James when he says, to him who knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him it is sin, right? Then, then sure, like the, the church has prescribed for me and obedience. I ought, I ought to fast in this time, for this period, for this reason. And so I, I, I should follow it. Um, it's not something actively wrong, but it's I'm, I'm missing out on something good. It's the, the word sin means missing the mark. And so if I'm, if I'm doing anything less than, than, than the mark, sure, for me it's sin. Mm -hmm. mm. What about someone who is very into working out and their macros and uh <laughs> hitting their protein goals sure. what what uh there's not very many protein dense sure. fasting foods sure what are we uh what are these people supposed to do 
You know, I, I will say if most people can get most of what they need w with a vegan diet, I don't think anybody is going to sort of have to run to the ER because of <laughs> eating like a vegan. But there are people who maybe on a very extreme, like uh, a very extreme scale of, of, of that and they, they need that for their whatever they're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. I, actually, I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue with them. What I would say is, what is my ultimate benefit? Do I want to ultimately? What What is the number one goal for me? To have the peak performing body, or is my number one goal for my spirit? Okay, it, it's okay for me to say to say, you know what, my body is second to my to my spirit. Actually, not even okay. That that's the goal. I, I should say my spirit should like actually. Saint Paul talks about that. The flesh is warring against the spirit, and so. If I, if you're essentially saying, well, you ought to let the flesh win. I, I have things to do. I got weights to, I have goals yeah. to achieve. I got, you know, whatever the case may be. I don't know. That what I, is my ultimate goal? I don't know that I'd say that because I would, I would almost argue that being as strict as someone who counts every single calorie they put in their body and sure. make sure they hit 200 or 250 sure. grams of protein. That's a much, it's not like they're, they're saying like, but I need my not, protein but that McDonald's. Goal's not spiritual. Huh? That goal is not spiritual. That right, goal is for it, my body. Well, is is there not something you could work around and like can, that's my point is like if 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 i find them to be diametrically opposed which one gives out which one should win i i would i of course i'm biased but i would say my spiritual goal should win it it's okay for me to get you know 220 grams of protein instead of 250 because i had to eat lentils instead of eating steak i think the judges at the bodybuilding show would disagree with i you. agree with you. i agree with you if my number one goal was peak performance i agree i agree maybe maybe you have to change your diet but that that's my argument is i don't think that that should be my number one goal it can be a goal to have a healthy body of course but that shouldn't be my number one goal hmm. oh i want to get in I, I just got to the part about uh drills drills in oh, fasting. like practices like, and like, things to do yeah i i'd like to hear some some uh things you would recommend to just, I mean, nothing specific to me or anything, but just if someone said, uh, what can I, what can I do during this fast to really elevate my spirituality? Yeah. What are some examples or things people can try? And, uh, the, a couple of things that I usually recommend for people to do during fasts, uh, I will usually give them, for example, some Psalms to memorize. So like, uh, I, I can assign them a Psalm or two during the fast, depending on the length of the fast. And, and then they can they memorize the psalm, then they learn to repeat it like sort of throughout their day and, and things like that, which is a nice uh, practice. And then over the years, you know, they, they might have memorized 5, 10, 15, 20 psalms, which is a wonderful thing. Also to, to read spiritual books, because sometimes that gets kind of lost in the shuffle. I'm told to read my Bible, I'm told to pray, but I can read, for example, certain books during certain periods of time. So for example, when, I, when I'm uh, in the Fast of the Apostles, the apostles they fasted why to begin before they began their service and so the apostles fast is usually sort of um thinking about or or revolving around service so if i can read a book about how to be a good servant a humble servant faithful servant so so reading spiritual books during during a fast is a wonderful thing so memorizing psalms reading spiritual books learning to say the jesus prayer with frequency or more frequently than i maybe typically do um like i mentioned before when I when I'm hopefully taking less time thinking about what I eat and how to prepare it and what it looks like, then I can spend more time with God in contemplation, in meditation. You know, so taking that extra time and, and dedicating it to God. So those are uh, just a few things that that we that I would probably recommend to people to to try and to do while they're fasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, they mentioned a couple of those, but one that one that's interesting that I just this is actually the I didn't read it before, but it's. Uh, the fasting of the tongue. I know you mentioned like yeah. holding your tongue earlier, but um, it's, I feel like for me, why would I wait until I'm fasting to, to work on something that I know that I'm not? It's not about waiting until I'm fasting, although I, I get your point. Yeah. It, it, it's sort of like I, I, am, I have an extra motivation or extra reason to stay away from this sin. You know, many times, like people say to me this too, like they're saying like, well, I know I have liturgy tomorrow, so I, I have to, you know, act right or behave or whatever. Or I just took communion. So you never, you ever walk out of church and like people say something. Like, well, I just took communion. Don't you know? Yeah, I, I can't, you know, I can't lie. I right can't now. lie. I can't right. until tomorrow. <laughs> it's not. It's not that it's lying is okay tomorrow and it's and it's not okay today. Mm -hmm. It's like it's it's more like 
this day is consecrated to God because I took communion. So this day is consecrated to God because I fasted. Therefore, I'm extra or maybe hyper vigilant about a certain sin or attaining a certain virtue, which is a wonderful thing. Like the thing is like the church understands that we're creatures of habit. So having seasons and times, if I told you, I want you to be 100% on your spirituality all the time, 24-7, 365. I'm with it. Let's she, do it. Sure. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, in a, in, in a perfect world, I mean, that's what the saints were, right? But the church but the church is, is, is wiser than that and says, you know what? For the average person, th- there are seasons. And, and, and so we want to encourage them in their seasons to have... Like, okay, this is a time to extra, you know, to be hyper vigilant. This is a time to be even more ascetic than you normally are. This is the time to to really, you know, focus in and hone in on a virtue or a, or, or, a, or, a, or a vice in your life. So the the church has kind of changed the way we fast from, from you know. Well, I mean, definitely the, the fast developed, like the, like the fast, the oldest fast that we have. I, I can't remember if I mentioned it in the beginning or not, but it's fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays. We fast every Wednesday and Friday. And that fast comes from the Didache, uh, which is a, a book that was written in the first century. So that fast was was always there. Uh, the fast of the great fast, because our Lord Jesus Christ fasted. Mm-hmm. So that fast was very quickly sort of adopted by the church. And the fast of uh, nativity and then the, the other fasts, they were added. So it's not as if, um, and actually there could be in the future a fast added or a fast taken away. It's not like those fasts are particularly like God ordained in which, you know, these are the days in which to fast. Mm-hmm. This is the church who has been given authority by Christ to to appoint certain times for, for fasting or, or, or non-fasting. So could there come a day where our fasts are different? Sure. Could they be less? Could they be more? Sure. And we trust in the wisdom of the church to to sort of uh, align those with the needs of the people. I see. So I, I think I misunderstood when I, I thought you meant like the the rules and the strictness and how we fast have changed over time, but you're saying the the even times, the fasts themselves, yeah, the times and and even the, the fasts specific themselves. fasts, yeah, they, yeah, those course. are changing. Of course, it's not that they're changing oh, constantly. But I'm saying they're, they're able they to change. They, of course, yeah, of course. So who who uh, the church sets the church, these? The, the, the bishops, the, the the synod, yeah, of course. Like the 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 thing is, like we believe in as as an Orthodox church, we 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 are a traditional church, an apostolic church, and so we follow in. The, the tradition of the apostles, the bishops are the successors of the apostles, and they're the ones, uh, they would never change anything that is like in faith and dogma. The, the, actually, they have no right. No one has a right to change. Mm-hmm. The faith is once delivered to the saints, as scripture teaches us. But the, the, the things about how to live out that faith, the particulars of when to fast or what hymn to say in church or, or, or the seasons or the calendars, those things are up to the church to determine. Hmm. Is there any... Um Anything else that we shouldn't be doing during times of uh, fasting? Like I know I've heard before that, uh, you know, married couples should refrain sure. uh, from... St. Saint Paul, Saint Paul talks about actually like when he's talking about sexual intimacy between a husband and wife, he says that they shouldn't deprive each other for uh, of one another, except for if they both agree for a certain time. And so the church encourages uh, partners to to discuss that with them with with one another and with their spiritual fathers um also as again like the the we talked about like why did we choose food and one of the things i mentioned is because it's a it's a bodily desire Mm -hmm. and and we're trying to train our one of the reasons we try to train ourselves that the spirit is what is is running the sort of running the show for Mm -hmm. lack of a better term than 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 my body and the same thing when it comes to my sexual desires not that that sexual intimacy is wrong Mm -hmm. but i but i refrain maybe for a time in order to dedicate that's what saint paul says to dedicate ourselves more to prayer Mm -hmm. the church encourages us to do that to to speak with each other and our spiritual guides in order to to sort of practice that as well okay and and so is there any other bodily desire or or you know sin of the flesh that we're no, I mean, I, the thing is, that, like, the specifics might be specific to some certain people. Or like, if, if I have a certain sin that I want to get mm-hmm. rid of, or maybe even, for example, something that is, like, I, a lot of people may do things that are not necessarily wrong, and they would give them up, like, during a fasting period to focus more on God. Like, they may uh-huh. say, like, okay, I'm going to turn off my social media for the for the fast so that I can, like, focus on God more, or I'm going to, I'm not going to read the newspaper anymore. Yeah. Well, not, not that those things are wrong. It's more like, I, I just want to spend some extra time with God during the fast. Yeah, I've heard people say they, they like won't listen to music and sure. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, is there any other, any other 
No, I think this is a good discussion fasting. about the fasting. And uh, I guess maybe one last plug for the book. I hope people could uh, pick up the book. It's on uh, The Spirituality of Fasting by Pope Shenouda. You can find it online. So it's, uh, it's a really, really nice book to teach you a lot about the virtues of fasting, how to fast correctly, the particulars of the fast of the church, why we fast, the scriptural proof for fasting, all those kind of things. So I think it's a really nice, beneficial book for everybody to read. And it's a pretty easy read. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. So, um, okay, well... Thank you.